French fries aren't food. Be gone, you shall not pass. You don't even get that reference, probably. I do, that's one of the few I get. A warm welcome to you all. Today I'm going to talk about how carnivore healed my IBS. I'm Eric, I'm a novelist, and I eat meat. I'm JJ, I'm a life coach, and I eat mostly meat. Well, this video is mostly about you, because you were plagued for decades mm -hmm. with stomach issues. What did I do all the time? You sat around going like this. <laughs> He didn't make those noises though. Do you remember the book Hawaii by James Michener? <gasps> yes, yes. Which we both read long ago when long. we were gonna go to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And in it, the queen is hugely obese, basically rich. Abundant. Abundance, yeah. yeah. And so there'd be stories about how she would eat these buckets full of poi and she had servants who would massage her belly to <laughs> make more room for more <laughs> poi. I think you tried that. Not with poi. But I used to massage my belly to try to make things work. But in uh, my 30s, I started just having gut pain. And it was concerning because, as I've mentioned before, I had health anxiety to begin with. And so any gut pains were alarming to me. When I was 45, I ended up being so nervous about this, I finally went to see the doctor. I was immediately referred to another doctor. <laughs> <laughs> because doctors don't ever tell you anything. They just refer you to a specialist who then is like, okay, <laughs> we got one on the hook now. But he said, it's IBS. And I said, what's that? He described the IBS as being um, spasms of the intestine. So normally the intestine has this peristalsis that moves material through it. Um, and he described that maybe I was just having gut spasms. <laughs> it, even then, I was sitting in that room going, this does not sound like science. Mm -hmm. This sounds like it could be spasms. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was idiopathic, which I think I've heard Dr. Berry say, idiopathic means idiotic and pathetic. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what percentage of time were you in pain? At that time, all the time. All the time? All the time. Call it more of a wearing pain, like a five or a six. You know, and occasionally you'd get like a seven or an eight, but then it would be, and it would just always be this constant thing. Now I didn't have, what is it, IBS-C or IBS-D. <laughs> it was just IBS pain. Which C, <laughs> I'm, guess, I'm making C a guess. C is constipation, cons yeah. D is diarrhea, I think. I would guess. So I was like, yes, let's do the colonoscopy. tree. My mother had, a section of her colon removed because of massive amounts of polyps. Fortunately, she never developed colon cancer. Uh, you actually remember that. Oh yeah, yeah. I was not part of the family at that no. point, but I did She know wasn't in the circle of trust yet. <laughs> I was in a circle enough to go she, to the hospital. She though. was definitely close to the circle of trust. <laughs> and um, so I went through that and it was nothing. So that left me with the pills, which did nothing. So they didn't work. <clears throat> is what you're saying. No, and so I started to do the search for the supplement or the special diet or what is the one food that's the triggering food. I was referred to a dietitian by somebody and she had me do a food sensitivity test and I got a report back that listed a bunch of foods, but we, we didn't really do a full elimination diet, which from my perspective, would be the only way to really attack it logically now. But she put me on a low FODMAP diet. I was making a lot of green smoothies, thinking I needed to get a lot more fiber. But what I found was the more fiber I consumed, the more acute pain I had. And the way that I would describe it, as I've said before, it's like eating a Brillo pad and having it rub through this raw wounded tracked. And now when I think back on all those green smoothies I had, it's like Dr. Chafee appears above my head going, you just ate a quart of toxins. <laughs> As your spouse. It's no fun. Like I'm constantly on the lookout. So if he's, if he's doing this, I'm mm. like, oh no. <laughs> I got to a point where it had lessened quite a bit through doing keto, recognizing that the things that made me the most bloated were wheat-based 
and the things that caused me a lot of pain tended to be high fiber. But you're being told from every direction that you need to be eating these things. Yeah. You need to be eating the high high nutrient density vegetables and you need to be eating fiber. Yes, fiber and veggies and stay away from the meat because that's, that's inflammatory and that'll make your blood acidic. <laughs> and oh, there's the whole thing of saturated fats association with colon cancer was a big deal for a long time. Mm. And I think that has since been discredited or debunked. I'm not a scientist, nor am I a doctor. No. So nothing I say is advice. You know, so I was nervous about eating the fat on my steak anyway. And so I thought, well, with all this gut pain, that's probably something to avoid. So, you know, I was, I've talked about it before in this channel. My lunch was built around the Mark Sisson BAS, the big ass salad. We went, we had to buy him a special salad bowl. Like we had a, we had a nice sized bowl, but it was not big enough. And I learned to really love this salad and sort of was confused by why my stomach didn't love it as much as my tongue well, did. And I may have pointed this out to him at one point or two points or maybe even three points. Let's do a reenact. I'm eating my salad. Okay. Oh. I think that when you started eating those salads, things maybe got worse for you. I'm not Are sure. Are you crazy? <laughs> that salad is the foundation of a healthy lifestyle. Truth be told, he never yelled it. I'm the wife. Oh. So not only am I seeing this and going, <laughs> uh-oh, <laughs> between his gut and his health anxiety, but I'm making these meals based on what he wants to eat, what he thinks is good for him. And then all of a sudden I, he's like, oh, by the way, I'm not eating that anymore. Oh, great. <laughs> I just bought a fridge full and I've got a crock pot full of this <laughs> sitting here right now. It was frustrating. Obviously I didn't blame you, but when you just mm. spent the whole grocery budget and you've just made yeah. a crock pot of stuff, it's like, oh, geez. Yeah. When we finally went when I finally went carnivore after she was had been sneakily doing it already, <laughs> it was just days and the gut started to feel so much better. Really for the first time in my life, there's that interior sense of body of what the gut actually is meant to feel like. Not distressed, <laughs> <laughs> not distended, not disrupted, fairly empty feeling. Incidentally, instantly, like within the first few meals, all acid reflux gone. I know you would be up at night with acid reflux. Every single night in the middle of the night, I would end up grabbing a Tums. Now, you said you felt IBS improving in a matter of days, yet I know too there was a transition period for you though. Yeah, because- So we need to, <laughs> you're right. So we need to- For those of you with IBSD, I did join your ranks for a month or so. Yeah. Because the, con the transition to carnivore was not something my gut was ready for. So while the pain and bloating symptoms vanished, suddenly we had what we love to call the involuntary cleanse strike us at inopportune moments. <laughs> and for me, it lasted for some weeks. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's the gut flora adapting or, or something else going on in the gut, but eventually I did adapt and now I can eat as much fat as I can possibly consume and there's no problem. Some people say it's only, you know, 10 days to two weeks, but you, yeah. yours was a little while. Yeah. As long as I stay on plan, my gut feels great. Mm -hmm. If you're watching this and you're thinking, I could never do carnivore because you're thinking, there's all these foods that I love. That's like one of the chief sources of joy in my life. How about, uh, Taco Tuesdays. Taco Tuesdays. Let's say that. Pizza Thursdays. Mm -hmm. These things are super comforting and they give us that hit of dopamine that we mistake for happiness and joy. But they're not. Pizza, maybe that's a maybe that's a 10 minute endeavor and it then it's like a 10 hour or maybe even a 2 day endeavor to recover from that. Once you've done that enough times and you and you feel what it feels like to be normal, mm. then those joyful foods, you see them for what they are. And it's much easier to just say, I'm not doing that to myself and begin building a menu of new dishes that you can turn to when you want to do something that's 
a celebration. So for instance, uh, the death by chocolate cake, Maria Emmerich's mm -hmm. Emmerich? Emmerich, I think. Um, which has a lot of dairy in it. I tolerate dairy fairly well. So that's something that on rare occasions, mm -hmm. we can have one of those and enjoy it. I had no inflammation yeah. or anything. Yeah, it was great. There's a, a carnivore lasagna. It's it's dairy heavy, mm -hmm. but, it, but that's something that we can turn to on occasion and enjoy just to not have another steak. Like today, I had a giant hamburger patty and my body just sort of like went, went Yes, that's what I've always wanted. Why haven't you been feeding me this before? I don't know why my body talks like Gandalf, but maybe it's because my body is wiser than I am. Maybe. I mean, I've had hamburgers with buns well, and, and fries. a side of french fries. The french fries aren't food. Because you shall not pass! <laughs> you don't even get that reference, probably. I do. That's one of the few I get. <laughs> I remember that very distinctly. Yeah, yeah. For those of you inclined to be Lord of the Rings fans, <laughs> the bun and the fries of the Balrog, <laughs> they shall not pass. <laughs> and sometimes they pass too quickly. <laughs> Once you kind of get past that adjustment period, you don't want to go back because you feel so good. So good. And IBS was not the biggest thing that it did for me. We did a video about how I got off my SSRIs and you should watch it right now.